Hey guys, welcome back. So today we want to talk about tactical lever action carbines. I know some folks have brought these up in the past. I know there's been some actual classes that have been taught on how to use the tactical lever action rifle. And this falls into the category, at least for me, of a fun gun to shoot but you can also make it quite practical depending on the cartridge that you choose to uh, turn into a tactical carbine, if you will. Now, this one is chambered in 357 slash 38 Special, but you can get them all the way up to 4570 and other cartridges as well. And you can turn them into a rifle very similar to this. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. We're going to talk about the tactical lever action carbine. We're going to show you two different versions of it. One of them highly customized, which is a Henry, and then one that's just basically has a rail, some updated sights on it, and a top rail and rear sight section all from Midwest Industries, and that one's not as customized as this one. It's something you just bolt right onto your own gun and get the same look. So with all that being said, let's get started with today's video, taking a closer look at tactical lever action carbines and are they fun or not? Tim, do you think you can hit 300 with that thing? I don't know. I've loaded up five rounds of 357 Magnum and uh, we got a North Breeze. and push that bow a little bit to the left. Challenge for the day. <laughs> I was holding a man and a half high, dude. That was funny. <laughs> Pretty cool. This is a Henry rifle. This is one of their 357X series of firearms, which is basically a blacked out tactical carbine as it comes from Henry. But what it doesn't come with from Henry is this Midwest Industries rail system that you see on here now. You'll notice the rear sight's been removed. A little plug has been um, installed in its place. The front sight is a Midwest Industries front sight. And then back here, we have a Midwest Industries short rail system with the integrated rear sight that works with that Midwest Industries front sight. And this sight is adjustable for elevation and windage. And so out here, this is the more affordable M-Lock rail system. It replaces the factory handguard on the gun. This one has a half by 28 threaded barrel on it and then a muzzle device that's been added. Now with the Henry rifles, they both have side loading gates now on the X models. And they also have tube feed that is accessible from the end if you don't have any type of muzzle device on the gun whatsoever. So even this uh, two chamber break, if you will, is just barely in the way of me being able to use the top loading tube feature of the Henry rifle. So I'm relegated to using the side loading gate, which is something that I'm you know, perfectly comfortable doing. Now you'll notice on top of this one, I have an aim point P1 micro. This is an old one. Gets about four months of battery life if you leave it on in a medium setting. And so I'm desperately trying to get my hands on a P2, but right now this P1 just bounces from rifle to rifle. But as you can see how it interfaces, if you go with a lower mounted optic than this one, uh, you might be able to get a lower co-third witness through it with this T1, or I'm sorry, this P1 micro on here right now. You don't have that option. Everything else about this gun is factory. It has a factory action on it. It is obviously a lever action. Notice it has a slightly larger loop on the X series and the action's pretty smooth. You'll notice that there's no manual safeties on the, on the hammer or anywhere back here on the wrist of the stock. Pretty interesting rifle, synthetic stocks, all that good stuff. And I'm a huge fan of the 357 slash 38 special. And let me tell you why. This is also a Henry 357 X series rifles, but this one has a custom finish on it, which is Cerakote. The custom work to this rifle has been done by Mad Pig and Mad Pig went completely all out in tricking this particular Henry rifle out for me to, uh, to produce this particular video. It has so many things on it. I'm actually going to put a sidebar up that literally breaks down every single thing they've done to this rifle, but from a very high level, starting out at the end of the rifle, we have a barrel that's been shortened, has half by 28 uh, concentrical threads. On that, we have a Huxworks slash OSS 9mm uh, suppressor out here. Once again, we don't have the ability with the can in place to use the end loading feature of the tube magazine. 
but if I unscrew the can because it's direct thread on there, I would then be able to access that loading feature there on the end. This is a Midwest Industries handguard. This one, you'll notice, has a pick rail going across the top where the previous rifle we showed you, the open barrel was exposed. So this pick rail runs all the way across. It's monolithic. It comes back and also attaches to the receiver back here. Now, there's several different versions of this handguard that Midwest Industry offers. There's this one that comes all the way back over the receiver. You can get it where it doesn't come back over the receiver and it's just out here. There's multiple different, different versions and and they have it for different Henry rifles, like the 4570s, the 357s, the 44s. They make a rail just for that. Now with this added rail space out here, you can put lights and all sorts of stuff out there. And for a farm rifle, it would make a lot of sense. I really like 38 Special. Generally speaking, in a normal market, it's a very affordable cartridge to shoot. And then when you're shooting it out of a 16 inch barrel with a suppressor, it is literally Hollywood quiet. You can hear the springs working in the mechanism of the rifle over the report. You can put 357 Magnums in there. You're going to get a sonic boom down range, but it's very pleasant, much like a bolt action sitting behind the rifle, shooting it with that suppressor on there. And again, it's just a nine millimeter suppressor. So this gun has that Patriot Brown finish coming all the way back, has the Midwest industry sights, which are part of this one piece monolithic rail that goes across the top here. They've changed out the hinge pin here for the lever of the gun. The um, guys over at Mad Pig completely slicked up the action of this gun. So they've, they've dehorned and polished the feed ramps, all the internal parts, the lifters, everything. And you'll notice a huge difference in the custom work when it comes to doing something as simple as loading from the side gate. The side gate's very easy to load. The factory Henry, you're basically scraping the end of your thumbnail off every time you put a round in there. This thing is buttery smooth. And that's all part of the action job that Mad Pig did. Mad Pig also custom fit this chisel stock that you see on here and then there's a side saddle that holds some extra rounds there that's been added as well to the chisel stock so this rifle is pretty much about as tactical as you can make a lever action so why do i like the 38 special well, i already told you it's very affordable and extremely quiet when suppressed but then you can step it up to 357 magnum which is legal to hunt deer with in this in, in the state that i'm in so this would make a very uh, good, if you will, deer rifle, if I wanted to use it in that capacity, but also just out planking. There's nothing quite like shooting a lever action rifle. It's just lots of fun. It's 100% American. It just kind of, this is a mixture of Old West versus, you know, modern technology, uh, all blended together into what I think is a really, really cool looking rifle. Again, you can build this yourself. Just run out, pick up a Henry X rifle, jump on the Midwest Industries website and check out the rail systems that they offer for it. And you're well on your way to building that tactical rifle. So let's talk about the red dot sight that's on here really quick. This is from Primary Arms. It's one of their new products designed right here in house in uh, Texas. And it's called the SLX RS10. It has a 70-75 T6 aluminum body on it, very large lens. It is a reflex sight. What makes it really cool is the fact that you can side load a 2032 battery, gives you about 40,000 hours of constant on use and uh, until you have to replace it. And that's at about a medium setting, which is what I'm running right now. And I can still see it in daylight, but it also has a night vision setting as well. These RS10 uh, red dot sights are just starting to come out. They come with mounting plates and it'll fit most popular mounting plates that are out there. But um, I believe this one comes with the Glock MOS, this particular one, but they have you know, pretty much any mounting plate you can think of will work with the, the uh, RS10. So that's a really interesting new development from Primary Arms. Overall, it just makes for a really, really cool little rifle. Let me show what I'm talking about. So we have some PMC here. Here's some 38 Special and 357 Magnum. This is primarily what we've been shooting today. It's some old LAX ammo. But look how easily I can just slide that round right into the, the uh, magazine tube. All right, so it'll hold eight rounds in the tube and then one in the chamber for a total of nine rounds if you want to load it to capacity. I mean, listen to how quiet that is. That was just into a tree. That's it. I mean, guys, it doesn't get any quieter than that. And so those little 38 specials must be 
subsonic because I'm not hearing a crack down range. Now I can throw in some 357 Magnums. Let me lay this rifle down here really quick. Now you're gonna lose a round of capacity if you use 357 Magnums because they're slightly longer than the 38 Specials. All right, and this is still quite hearing safe. Quite a bit more punch. Really hits that steel plate with some authority. Lots of power there into the tree now. And so that boom that you're hearing is the supersonic crack of the bullet break, breaking a sound barrier downrange sitting in the shooting shack. It's very, very quiet, but the 38 specials are literally what we call Hollywood quiet. I mean, it's just, you can hear the, the, the springs and stuff in the action work when the gun fires, it's so epically cool. And yes, the tactical lever action is a lot of fun. So the question is, is there a practical application for a tactical lever action rifle? And the answer to that question is yes, of course there is. It depends on what you want as the end user. For me, this is a fun gun. Could I use it as a hunting rifle or something more? Absolutely. Had I chosen to get something in 4570, which Midwest Industries does make rail systems for the 4570 version as well, then that's you know a great backpack backwoods gun. It gives you the ability to mount multiple different optics types now with this pick rail across the top. I have a red reflex on here, but I can put a magnified optic on here just as easily. I have the ability to put hand stops, lights, whatever I want to make this rifle more suitable for where I plan to use it. So yes, I do think that there's uh, something to be said for the tactical lever action carbine. Lever actions typically are quite reliable. Uh, you can get these rail systems from Midwest Industries, both for the Henry rifle like, like you see here, or you can pick it up for some of the Marlin rifles as well. You can find out more information on the Midwest Industries website. This is an example of a $180 rail where we don't have the pick rail coming across the top. Back here, we have the Midwest Industries sight system and short rail. And this little package here will cost you about 135 bucks for just this short rail, just to put a red dot sight on it like this, all the way up to $325 for this particular rail system that comes all the way back includes the sights as well. So there's something out there for everybody. Uh, if you want to modify your Henry or your Marlin rifle, check out the Midwest Industries accessory rails. I think they're actually pretty darn cool. Do check out Mad Pig Customs. The slick up or the slickening up of the action on this rifle is really, really nice. I must say that you know, it has a nice three and a half pound trigger pull, very smooth action, much easier to load through the side gate. And overall with the flat dark earth Cerakote job, it's just outstanding looking rifle. It did come with a tri-lug adapter on the end, but I've never had good accuracy results with tri-lug adapters. So we took this off and direct threaded the OSS can onto the gun. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can post those questions down below. I try to stick around for the first day or so and answer any questions you guys may have. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, the best possible way to do that is to become part of our Patreon family. There is a link in the video description below. Also right here on YouTube, you got that little join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. Mash that join button and support us right here on YouTube in the age of demonetization. And last but not least, guys, please swing by and check out coppercustom.com. Thank you for 14 years of support. We love you guys. We'll talk to you soon.